everybody, this is Captain Kyle, and I had the pleasure of speaking with John Glover, an amazing actor who I've seen in many, many, many things. And we are going to talk today mainly about Fear the Walking Dead, but who knows, we're not going to limit ourselves to what we're going to talk about. But, you know, we definitely have some questions about that. How are you doing today, John? Swell. Just swell. Swell. Not a lot of people say swell anymore. I think that's a, a term that needs back. to come back. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then when you really get it, you go, swell, Isabel, swell. I don't know why. So I must say you were amazing on Fear the Walking Dead last season. It was amazing to see you. What attracted you to that particular role? I read, I didn't read a script. I read a, um, a, um, a description of uh, who Teddy was. And it, uh, it looked like it was uh, going to be a, a really interesting role to play with lots of twists and turns and surprises. So I was uh, very pleased when I read the first script. And uh, it was a four-episode arc, I believe it was. I, the, my only sadness was uh, that they, they killed me too soon. I would have liked to have done some more episodes. He was such fun. So, so, but I had a blast. I mean, it was, uh, it was a barrel of fun <laughs> playing this guy. You actually did have a blast because you sent nuclear missiles all over the place. So you literally, I guess, yeah. I, I think you are the villain who has caused the most damage ever in the Walking Dead universe. So congratulations uh, on that. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> when you were on the sub and you were talking to John Dory Sr. and uh -huh. he identified himself, I really like that expression on your face. Did you have to do that scene a few different times? And was John, the John Dory actor, was he present? Yeah, he was on the phone. I mean, I couldn't see him. I could only hear him. How did you come up with that, like, just kind of like, I don't know if I'd call it an oh shit expression when it's like, oh, this is the bastard who put me in prison. Was that something you just came up with or is that something they directed you to kind of react in that way? Well, it sort of makes sense. If I, you know, I mean, it was a surprise that he was there, I think, wasn't it? I would think so. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people well, had died. So, yeah. So he put me in jail. So it was a sort of a moment. But he couldn't see me, so, so then I had to fake it. <laughs> <laughs> you had a relationship with... Sue. I called her Sue. Yeah, you oh, called her Sue. That was Zoe. Yes. Yeah. This and I think that she was a little girl. So she's, yeah, she's, her brain, and her brain is so young. But I just know I liked her a lot, and she's a lot of fun. And, uh, and I didn't know till uh, who somebody said about Teddy, which I'd never didn't understand, but he liked young girls, which she was. Yes, that was yeah. quite the. Uh... But, but I don't know where that came from because I, I wouldn't. So I say it to people and they go, oh, oh my God. But, uh, but anyway, there were other things. And then there was Alicia, who's gorgeously beautiful and knows how to work a camera i'll say she's a very talented <laughs> young lady very sure of herself yeah I, I was a little surprised that the good guys didn't stop you but you know i guess you're pretty unstoppable yeah but dead but dead you know dead. yeah in smallville you know i mean they killed me about three times and then had me back in the last episode and killed me three times more, I think. They kept killing me. <laughs> yeah, what is it about that? You know, you keep... I don't know. You died in Batman and Robin because you made Poison Ivy, and then she, you know... Oh, we had to keep doing that scene over and over and over again. Oh, kiss me again, Uma. Kiss me again. It was hard to do. It was very difficult to do. I could tell you are traumatized about it to this day. <laughs> to this day, yeah. What was the most challenging aspect about working on Fear the Walking Dead? Learning the lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got to work with a lot of what I like to call bitas, but they call walkers, you know, the zombies. And you got to, to kill a number of them um, uh -huh. in that one scene 
when Alicia's old friend showed up and turned out to be bandits, you were quite the, the biter killer in Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, they had to teach me how to do that because I didn't I, I, I couldn't watch it when it when it happens on the TV. I can't I have to. I can't watch that part. First thing I had to do was to take a, a knife and stick it in somebody's eye. It was lying down on the floor there. That was that was the beginning. It was that like the last thing of when I put my hand out to Alicia. But before that, I mean, a very nice stuntman was lying there on the floor for seeing what like whatever. And I was so afraid I was going to poke wrong. Or, or I mean, it, it took a while. And then and then when we were out in the wilderness, you know, with them out, you know, when they come eating, they said they said, you're better at killing them than you. They're acting now. You don't have to be so uh, uh, fearful because you know how to do this really good. So but but still it was I, I was still I was afraid it was going to hurt those guys because they're all wrapped up sweating there, you know, because there's no real. It must be a sweating mess to be those walkers. But they do it, and uh, and it, I mean, I have no idea what's under there. There was this one uh, who was a, a stunt woman. I, I couldn't tell if it was a woman until she spoke. But uh, but then when I saw her out of costume, she was a complete yin to her walker's yang. I mean, <laughs> she was a little kind of ballet dancer woman. It's so beautiful. So surprise, surprise. Yeah, but, but she lives under that mask in the, in the Texas summers. That was, uh, yeah. The makeup effects on that show are, oh, are really amazing. quite amazing. amazing. Amazing, truly amazing. At and, least you, you didn't have to become one. <laughs> and, and what's up? Yeah, yeah. Because people ask, are you going to be a walker dad? I said, no, 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 no. No, I don't <laughs> think I could have done that. But, you know, during the pandemic, we uh, we all rehearsed. All the the crew had uh, masks, and uh, and we had our masks on. So the first time we shoot a scene is the first time you do it without a mask. And it's uh, and, and they're on the submarine in that little small compartment. You know, we'd we'd stop and sometimes roll, and you would sort of forget to remask. Uh, cause it was going to be how long, you know, it could turn into a much longer time. So uh, we got used to that cause it, it, it the, just all of a sudden you feel naked without protection. Yeah. Uh, but, but we got tested all the time, about three or four times a week. Uh, so they wanted to make sure that everybody was safe. So the challenge is in addition to the, the Texas heat and, you know, yeah. and the physicality was the pandemic. So with all those challenges, you did an amazing job of making it appear as if you were not in a pandemic. Well, the, the virus <laughs> for the zombies is a different pandemic, but it's it. it just the script was so good that, that there was uh, there was that to focus on. So it just, you know, we f- finally realized that we're being very safe we we know that the people we're we're working with are 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 all test negative, so we just did the work, and the scripts were divine. I mean, very creative. I thought I was pleased with all of them. Wonderful writing. People say that season six is one of the best seasons of Fear the Walking Dead, um, if not the best season of of Fear the Walking Dead. So good job, <laughs> as thank usual. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I watched uh, um, Scrooge uh, the other uh, s- several weeks ago. I was flying uh, uh, back and forth between L.A. and New York, and uh, and Delta has a great uh, uh, slew of movies you can uh, sit and watch, and their headphones are really, really good. Um, it's my new favorite airline, Delta. But I saw Scrooge was there and I hadn't seen it since I'd seen it the first time, which was years ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that came out. I did Scrooge the same time I was doing the chocolate war. I remember I I wore a belt in uh, Scrooge that cost more than I made in uh, the chocolate war. It was (laughs) interesting. 
because <laughs> we did it um, in um, up in um, you know one of those uh, Washington or state where it rains a lot. Anyway, where Keith Gordon directed it was like a half million dollar movie, and or maybe not that much, but it was a wonder. Do you ever see the Chocolate War? I can't walk. say I've seen that one. I've seen Scrooge. Uh-huh. Well, but... they're at the same time, but I was so pleased with what I did in Scrooge because I, I didn't re- re- remember it really. And I, uh, I don't, I mean, I remember having a good time and Bill Murray was a lot of fun to work with and he was very generous with himself and ideas for saying things that, because he's a funny guy. Um, and I had a great time with both of those, but I was back and forth. I was, it was a very busy year that year. We like when you keep busy, but that was released in 1988. So you had to have been making it in like 85, 86, somewhere around there. So it's been a little while. So not remembering everything that you did on Scrooge, I think is quite forgivable. What's so lucky is that I, uh, I'm in a, a Christmas movie that a lot of people watch uh, every year. Tradition. I, I worked, uh, I did a, a musical thing at, uh, in Beverly Hills, so I don't. I sing off key a lot, so I don't um, do a lot of musical stuff. But I remember there was a wardrobe woman on a, on a show that was upstairs somewhere else, and when she uh, saw me there, she freaked out because Scrooge and her family is such a big thing at Christmas time. So she was thrilled, and I had a little a little version of the script that I used to carry around. So I could just keep reading my scenes over and over. And I found it uh, where I was living and I gave it to her as a, as a gift for her family's this tiny l- little miniature script for. That uh, is very cool. Yeah. yeah. A, an actual used copy of a script. You know, next uh-huh. time I see you, I want a script. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Let's let's go with a couple, you know, more off the wall questions or, or maybe simple questions. What is your favorite color? Right now it's blue because I'm working on a blue scarf. I'm a knitter. I make scarves Well, because I'm making a blue scarf, but I just finished a red scarf before that. And then if I had a, a white one, it would be red, white, and blue, but all right. Anyway. <laughs> and those colors apparently don't run. Um, well, that leads me to ask, what do you do to relax? You're a knitter. I knit. Um, what else do you do? I walk. I hike. I, I, in, uh, in L.A., I have a house that's on top of a, a rather small mountain. And so there's a kind of a, a mile kind of hike thing that I l- like to do in the morning before I eat my oatmeal and hard-boiled egg. I go a little crazy. Um, when I get a job, I'm very happy. Because I, now I know I'm going to get to be somebody else in a little while, not me. So it's, it's a lot of fun to put these different people together that I play. And the, what's interesting to me is that because I've done so many DC, uh, you know, roles and DC movies and stuff, which I never uh, read those comics, and, and they've all fallen into my lap. So all those things just got offered me. So I don't quite understand it, but it's, I guess it's what I call the power of the universe because I'm the Riddler in the animated series. And yep. I've done all this kind of DC stuff. So I don't understand why, but I like it all. And I'm glad that they keep asking. So I hope it continues. I think DC does like to reuse actors. They, they do bring people back. Yeah. Um, there's a number of people who were in Smallville who were either in prior DC shows or later DC shows, including yourself, mm-hmm. you know, Smallville, uh, Batman, the animated series, Batman and Robin, Shazam and Lucifer. I guess once you're in with DC, they know you're reliable and they just want you back. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't really audition for a lot of roles nowadays. It's pretty much they call you up and say, we have a role that we want you to take. You're offered roles. Is that correct? Yes. I'm actually, if, if I do audition, I don't get them. <laughs> so, so I stopped auditioning. <laughs> wow. Well, so I, why do you think that is? I, I don't know. Maybe they like my work that I've done or think I'm 
can do it. I don't know. A lot of them are villains, you know. But one of the one of the things in Smallville was that people would stop me on the street if they recognized me, um, and say things like, uh, "It's happened a lot." They'd say, "Come on, we can't figure out. Are you supposed to be a good guy or a bad guy in this?" And it was like the best compliment I could get because I made him human. This guy, he could be good, he could be bad. He he was he was human. The answer is yes. Yes. He is supposed to be both. Yes. No good villain thinks they're a bad guy. You know, they do Mm -hmm. what they feel is right. And sometimes that doesn't jive with what the rest of the people think Mm -hmm. is right. So, So you're very focused on acting. If you weren't an actor, what do you think you'd be? You know, I thought that I was going to be, when I was in high school, that I was going to be the teacher like the English teacher or whatever that uh, that uh, directed the plays, you know, for the kids and everything. Um, and uh, then my friend, because I went to a, uh, I grew up in Maryland and uh, I went to a Towson State Teachers College, it was called at the time. Um, but I uh, was terrified to um, teach people English or whatever, because I was never a very good student. I did my homework watching a TV set because my dad sold them. So, and they, I mean, we'd set up a card table and watch TV and I'd do my homework, which meant I really didn't, I wasn't good at studying, you know? Uh, I don't know why I'm saying all these things, but, but, but I found a, you know, I found something that made me happy that I get to do and I seem to be doing, I mean, I, somebody, I'm in my late seventies, like I said, I'm 77. And, and somebody asked me once if I've retired. <laughs> so, but as, lo- as long as I can learn those lines, I can work, I think. I think. Absolutely. Pretty, pretty good shape. People say I'm, you know, they would maybe put me in my late sixties or something. I don't know whether they're being complimentary, but, but I don't look like a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, I'm two years away from 80. I've got, uh, but I still feel like I'm beginning to understand my father a lot too. Uh, you know, when he when he started uh, aging and after my mother died, I mean, it was hard for him because he was alone. They did everything together. They golfed together. They took vacations together. And there he was alone. So he went through a really, really rough time, you know, with drinking and stuff. Um, and I didn't understand it all quite then. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm in one of those places where, oh, if only I'd realized then what I was now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's boredom that takes people to their graves. It's not disease or sickness. It's boredom. We fill our hours with laughter and life and love. But as my mother, there was a summer theater down in, in South, uh, Southwest Virginia. Uh, my my uh, my mother's side came from Pulaski, Virginia, which is very near Roanoke, which is very near Abingdon, Virginia, where this theater called the Barter Theater, which was created during uh, the 30s, I think, when nobody had any money. And this guy, Robert Porterfield, took a lot of his actor friends down to Abingdon, where there was a theater. And but they didn't have any money down there then. So it was a lot of farmers and things. So they would barter their way into the theater and bring a ham or bring a dozen eggs or bring chickens. And so they didn't make the actors didn't make a money, but they they, they ate well. <laughs> uh, so so I went down there and apprenticed and started working with uh, with actors from New York. And I went down there every summer vacation to work at the barter theater. And I played some great roles there, some leads and things. And I and so I moved to New York because I was working with actors who were actors who'd chosen that profession to see if I could do that. And and I've been able to. I, I've knocked on wood, never had to work as a waiter. I was a dishwasher once, which I did very well. And the bartender there <laughs> gave me a table to wait on, which I totally screwed up. And so I was terrified to be a waiter because I didn't know how to do it. And in Salisbury, Maryland, we didn't have any restaurants. So I didn't know really how to behave in a restaurant. Even when I got to New York, I tried to pretend I knew what I was doing. But one said, John, you're 
be acting very rude. Why are you so nasty? I said, I'm, I'm trying to pretend like I, I know what I'm doing. So it came off the wrong way. I was <laughs> just being flippant with them and <laughs> insulting. The journey is different for everyone. Everybody. Yeah, sure. And it sounds like, yeah, you, you found your, your home in acting. I have one final question. I have just given you a box. You know what's in it. Is the thing that you want the most? You open the box, you look inside, what is there? A job. A job. <laughs> Always the next job. Guaranteed yeah. employment is in that box. Hi, diddly D, an actor's <laughs> life for me. Have you turned down roles based on a bad script? I know I said one last question, but... Yes, I've, I've declined things that I uh, were... You didn't feel was right for you? Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I am a, a character actor, and I um, like, like different kinds of characters and stuff. So I try and keep it rounded off. And... John, I want you to have an awesome holiday. Thank you. And I thank you so too. much yeah, for spending. Nice talking to you. Yeah. Till next, till next we meet. Now, may I say to, to anybody that may be watching now that, that hasn't gotten their vaccination yet, it's the, it's the best way to, to go, to live. Mask, vaccinate. And, it, and it's yep. not about them. It's about yep. helping others. Yep, helping others. It's a gen think of it gen as generosity to the fellow man, for mankind. God bless. Thank you, John. And thanks, everyone who's watching. He's got some wise words about acting, about vaccines, about life. Boredom is the true killer. And, and that is something that I'm going to live by. I don't think I'm ever going to retire. Thanks to you, John. You're thanks here. so much. I'm glad I gave you that gift. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see everyone next time. And as always, have fun and follow your fandom. Uh huh. This is John Glover, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Lionel Luther recommends it. Ah, have some fun. Follow your fandom. <laughs>